Also here at the table with us, Jen Pellegrino, the great, the former, uh, the, probably the founder of the Article 3 Project, Mike Davis. All right, squad, let's get, uh, let's get into it. White House uh, spokesman Ian Sams slammed Congressman James Comer today after his press conference, tweeting, and I'm quoting now, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is now promoting wild accusations of treason against President Biden, despite Comer himself offering no evidence of any wrongdoing by the President of the United States and no examples of any influence on government decisions. This is uh, getting uh, really desperate and uh, sad, isn't it? Uh, uh, that's, that's crazy. It, isn't uh, isn't uh, pointing to various bank records and information gathered from congressional investigation and subpoenas evidence, Mercedes? <laughs> Goodness, I just remember being at the White House and having to deal with the Russian hoax, or even better than that, the Ukrainian call where it was just one piece of document that the Democrats used to try to take down President Trump. Here you're talking about literally subpoenas of bank uh, records, wire transfers, and we also have the Hunt, Hunter Biden laptop, which, as we know, it was Secretary of State Antony Blinken and 51 intelligence officers who basically said that the Hunter laptop, that was Russian disinformation. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the CIA actually now coordinating with, uh, with what right. would have been the intelligence officers to literally edit and draft that letter. Ian Sams also said that, uh, that uh, he was, Comer accused him of treason. He didn't accuse him of treason. He said that he has no evidence whatsoever. He's got a mountain Plenty. of evidence. Yeah. So, uh, Roger, what's, uh, what's up with this kind of response from the White House? Well, first off, thank you so much for having me and for having me here with everyone else. Um, unfortunately, I have a long memory, and there's been a lot of moments over the last few years where it's the Nunes memo, and then it's the Durham investigation, and all these things that are going to blow the roof off some cauldron of conspiracies and everything else. And lo and behold, a couple days go by and nothing. I am not a tribalist. If there is something there, I think, first off, four years of the Trump Justice Department certainly would have found it, because clearly the Trump uh, Justice Department was willing to do anything it was asked. But at the same time, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. If something is there, let's go at it. But there's a pattern here of getting to the rooftops, screaming that the world is about to come to an end, and that there's all this proof, and then nothing. So, Roger, I didn't think we would agree on anything today, um, mm -hmm. but I do agree with you to an extent on that. I think there is this tendency to jump to the conclusions mm -hmm. in these situations. Um, a lot of questions pointing to the Biden family, Biden family members, whether it's Biden's brother, whether it's Hunter, whether it's others that have been receiving money that we see in these banking transactions. Uh, but the big concern is, where is the smoking gun that points directly to Joe Biden? Now, we do know the FBI is sitting on some information about a whistleblower that may have that evidence, and that's what we need to hear more about. Well, there are millions of dollars coming in from now Romania added to the list, communist China on the list, uh, Ukraine, of course, we know all about. And I I've got a question for you, Mike. What is the Biden family's business? What business are they in? Well, they're bringing in millions of dollars from all these funny countries. Uh, what services are they providing? That's a very good question. I mean, the Trumps had a real estate business, and right. they built hotels, and they took grief for building hotels in Washington, D.C. I think right. the Bidens have built a pretty lucrative uh, corruption business, and it seems like the only Biden not on the payroll is the four-year-old granddaughter who they don't even claim. <laughs> And I think there are two grandchildren that actually are receiving yes, exactly. uh, money here. And, and honestly, uh, Roger, what is, the, what is their family business? What does the Biden family do to make all this money? Well, there's a very interesting history of, of presidential uh, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters that I can go all the way back to Billy Beer and things like that. If you, if you remember well, back well, to the Carter why, why don't we stick to the Biden family? But sure, investment groups, sitting on boards, etc. I don't know what anyone has particular degrees in, you know, of, but for example, um, one of the things that goes completely unexamined here when we talk about the Trump administration is President Trump had a secret bank account in China, and all of a sudden, the Republican Congress had zero standards for that. And now there's like these very complex standards and, the, and these thresholds well, of evidence that they want to make. I know, I know, and again, the last thing is elasticity. 
All of a sudden today, I always look for, does things start to creep and move? Now it's Romania, so they're backing away a little bit from China, and now it's some friends, no. so they're backing okay. away from no, they're the adding family. Romania. Because Hunter Biden, the artist, and the money coming for all these paintings <laughs> that, he's, that he's getting, don't you think that should be investigated? I, I, I'll go back to my original point. I'm fine. I'm not a tribalist. I'm not just going to knee-jerk say that, they're, that this is some witch hunt and blah, blah, blah. If there's something there, like I said, frankly, the, for four years, the Trump Justice Department could have dug into this as much as they wanted. I do want to argue, though, that President Trump, he w wasn't a politician at the time. You're talking about the fact that, Hunt, uh, that Hunter Biden, that Joe Biden has been in politics for decades. And there are a lot of these questions being raised of what a public servant, what a senator or vice president, you know, what money they could or could not accept based on ethics. I do believe and I do agree that transparency is key. I will say that uh, Congressman Jim Jordan, uh, Congressman James Comer, they're very meticulous. They are not going to go and sound the alarm unless they really have evidence behind this. And so, you know, we do have to see how this unravels itself. But I, I do give credit to both of those congressmen because they just don't go and you know, just just try to destroy someone or do something like that. They're more about let's figure this out. Let's see if we have the evidence and, and get to the bottom. Well, I've got to say, you know, your response was to say, well, they may sit on boards or something. It's true. Hunter Biden was paid about a million dollars a year along with his friend Devin Archer right. for a no-show job in Ukraine uh, for a gas company there that was under investigation when Joe Biden threatened the government of Ukraine with uh, pulling loan guarantees of a billion dollars unless they fired the prosecutor that was investigating the gas company Burisma that was paying his son nearly a million dollars a year and his son's best friend. And as far as we know, uh, it's true, they, they checked him down as, uh, they marked him down as a board member. Uh, we're not aware that he's ever been to Ukraine. He doesn't speak Ukrainian. He has no background in the gas industry or the ener energy industry. I guess it's good to be a Democrat, huh? He, I mean, he, is a, he is the bag man for the Biden family, and there is evidence that President Biden is compromised. And if Democrats don't want to look at that, then it, we're in a bad place in America. And as Hunter, Hunter Biden's text messages back to the laptop, uh, telling his own daughter that he has had to hand over half of his, his income to his father, and Tony Bobolinsky and a big guy and all that. And that's that.